Hello and welcome to this video, which is the second part of the review of the varnishes made by Oldwood 1700. If you haven't seen the first part, have a look here, where I put a link. In the first video I used the grounds and I also put the first layers of varnish and colored varnish. Until now I have put four layers of color. But as you might have seen, I didn't like the color going too much towards brown, so I ordered a couple of extra colors, which are more red, especially the Luck Dye Red and the Sorgo Venetian Red. I just tried a little bit on a small piece of wood, it is still lying here, uh, to see how these colors are, and I have to say that if you buy the Luck Dye Red, you have to be very careful because it is really very very reddish so only mix it with other colors and don't apply it directly to the instrument i think that it will become very red maybe like my notes of course if you like that color be my guest now i want to apply another layer as i did previously and i'm going to mix one quarter of the luck dye red with one quarter of the pernambuco golden brown and the rest will be the Sorgo Venetian Red. Then I will add one part of the Cremona varnish as I did with the previous layers. And as this is an oil-based varnish, it has to dry in the chamber. This layer of varnish is also dry. Now I can start working on the appearance of the instrument. I want to make it look like an older instrument, like it's been used for several years. And that is a process that is done almost entirely on the varnish of the instrument. Of course you can also work on the wooden part of the instrument when you are making the instrument. For example, by uh, not making the corners very precisely, like they are worn out, and also at the scroll. But these are things that have not been done on this instrument, and I'm not going to do them in this video. Today I'm only going to work on the varnish. Now what makes an instrument look old is of course the wear of the varnish. And that's why by using, for example, sandpaper, I'm going to remove some varnish from the parts that are mostly uh, touched by the player like this part here because when you are playing on position your palm touches this part and removes the varnish slowly slowly and a lot of instruments are put flat on older cases or on the table so the lower part of the arching of the back loses its varnish. Many players, especially in the past, didn't use a shoulder rest, so the instrument was resting with its back on the shoulder of the player, so this part is also worn out, and if they haven't also used the chin rest, also this part. And the scroll by tuning also loses a lot of varnish. I'm going to start with the back, the top of the belly and this part, and then we will go slowly to the top and the rest of the instrument. I will use some 1800 micromesh and water. So as this part touches or the table or the case, often there are some scratches which are black. I will use a piece of grid 80 sandpaper to make some small spots which I'm going to color black. I'm going to use this black acrylic paint which dries very fast to make the spots darker. As soon as the violin is ready, I will put it for sale. Watch the video until the end for more details.
In the same way, using the file and the acrylic paint, I added some more scratches and dents. So I think that I will leave the back like that for the time being, and now we can go to the top. The top has a big difference, that of course all the mounting is here, starting with the fingerboard. I will put it back in place, temporary, so I can work around it. Of course the fingerboard protects a part of the top, that you also don't see. I will remove this piece of wood that I use for the varnishing process, and I will fix the fingerboard with a piece of tape. The top gets worn out here, by the way of playing, and here by the absence of a chin rest. That's where I'm going to start. At the other side, this part just in front of the bridge gets dirtier and darker because some people tend not to clean their instrument very often. So I'm going to sand it very lightly and then put a bit of dark color on it. Very often this part is damaged by the feet of a bridge, that's why I'm going to use this bridge which has adjustable feet to make a couple of spots and I'm going to put the feet in a bit of alcohol so it shows a little bit the varnish. And of course, let's not forget the marks made on this part of the top by the fine tuners. Going to the ribs, of course this part is the most worn out, again by the way that the instrument is played. Of course not until the edges, because the hand follows the shape a little bit, so it never touches right into the edge, and also not exactly until the corner, and also this part of the neck gets a bit lighter. This rib doesn't get very dirty, but this one does, because by the way we play, a lot of rosin remains here, and it's not very often cleaned properly. And this side of the edge also gets ruined by the frog of the bow. This side of the ribs is also worn out by the neck of the player, but not where the chin rest is. These parts protect the instrument, so I will fix a chin rest on place. And use the sandpaper again to make it a bit lighter. And what also happens a lot is some marks here and here by this part of this tool. A lot of people are not very careful and pass through the hole and scratch the instrument. Let's scratch it a bit.
Of course I can make these scratches also a bit darker again with this color, but I can also use a bit of the pigments of old wood and that's what I'm going to do now with a bit of the Pernambuco Golden Brown. On the rest of the ribs I will only add a couple of scratches and some dents. And I will make these parts here also a little bit darker. Finally, we can go to the scroll, where also this part suffers from putting the instrument on a table or in a case. Let's fix that a little bit with some sandpaper. And this is also a part that you could sand a bit flatter when you are making the scroll. And here I can also add a dent or a scratch. And of course by tuning the instrument all this part of the scroll gets a little bit lighter. So I will tune the instrument a bit. But also these parts here get dirty and are very hard to clean, especially if you never do it. And this part also get a bit lighter by your hand. Okay, I think that I'm satisfied with the instrument like that. I'm going to apply now two layers of transparent varnish to fix everything and protect the instrument. So it doesn't wear out very fast as I have already done that. And then we will go ahead. I just finished varnishing the instrument. The two last layers will protect everything. As you see the shine of the varnish is really beautiful. Now I am going to paper it very lightly just to remove some small spots and some small uh, traces of the brush. And I will use 2400 micromesh and uh, linst oil instead of water because that will be even less aggressive. Now I'm going to use this polish to bring the shine back. Now we'll use a small piece of cotton. And I will give the finishing touch with the Italian cream. Again with a piece of cotton. As you see the violin is finished and it is nice and shiny again. I have to mount it still but I'm not going to do this on camera as this is not the purpose of this video. But as soon as it is ready I am going to sell it. First of all I will put it on sale on Patreon so Patreons will go first and have also some extra discount. I expect the instrument to be priced under 1000 euro including shipment. And then if I still have it I will put it on Facebook and Instagram so follow me there so you won't miss it. In conclusion about the varnishes, I have to say that I am satisfied with the products and what I really like a lot is the amount of information that they give about each product and how to use it. The grounds work very well 
and I like the varnish a lot. It is very transparent and very shiny. I like that very much. There's only one thing and this is the pigments. I have used five of them and I keep having the feeling that they are not very transparent. But I had some correspondence with Mrs. Carmen who is working at uh, Oldwood and she sent me a sheet with a lot of information about the difference between dyes and pigments. It is a lot so I'm not going to tell you everything. I will put uh, the information that she sent me in the description. I will put a link so you can find it and read it. It is very interesting. In any case she let me also know that pigments are a bit less transparent than dyes. So if you go for 100% transparency you have to use some other kinds of colors and they also have colored oil varnishes that I also want to use. We are talking now uh, she might send them to me so I can use them and of course let you know what I think about these. So my overall conclusion is that these colors and varnishes work very well. They are a bit pricey but you have really good materials in your hands. I'm going ahead to mount the instrument. I will put some pictures on Facebook and Instagram as soon as it is mounted. Thank you very much for watching. Many thanks to Carmen and Oldwood1700 for the information that they sent me. Many thanks to the Patreons for supporting the channel. Don't hesitate to visit my Patreon page if you like my content and you would also like to support the channel. Like the video if you liked it and I will see you next time again. Bye bye!